Blog Talk Radio. So am I actually connected or does it say like, where, where's the blog talk broad? Oh, good. Internet friend can hear me. Very good. We have a wonderful turnout tonight. Welcome to the Joe Gibson wrap up show, which I was so happy to call into Joey G show tonight and advertise and whoever else advertised to tell everybody about this wonderful, amazing show um, that I am hosting as you know, I do. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, this is going to be great. We're going to have a wonderful, uh, evening. We're going to discuss what is probably the number one show on blog talk radio. Uh, the Joe Gibson show. I don't even know the name of that. What, what is it? Uh, something understanding the times in which we live in today. I don't know. Anyway. So I got about halfway through the show, maybe less. I think it was probably less. I skipped most of the show. I called in for the advertisement. I called back in to hear um, the clusterfuck of what I call a radio show. Um, what I did hear, and, I, and, I, and none of us people that have common sense or you know aren't douchebags or just complete naive children, um, none of us have actually had the opportunity to call in and say what we want to say because, I mean, God forbid, th- this is a Joe Gibson call. Um, okay, caller, caller, go ahead. Go, go ahead, caller. And then, um, hi, my name is, um, no, 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 You weren't quick enough. So that's, that's the, pretty much, that's the phone call, but that's what happens on his show. So whatever. Now we have a wrap up show and the listeners do have a voice and believe me, we are going to have a great few voices tonight. And I even have a special guest and I'm so excited about this. I am more excited about this than, than the second and first night of WrestleMania. And we will not talk about that. Do not fucking bring it up tonight. You motherfuckers don't, I I will literally consider it trolling me. I hated it that much. I fucking hated it that much. (laughs) Um, and how dare you? I jazz farted, farted. So that I sound like Frittata doing a Joe Gibson impression. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Love you. All right. So now we're going to uh, we're going to start taking. Well, one of the questions that came up on the show, I didn't listen to the whole show because I was um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to stab my ears. Um, what I did hear, and yes, Inner Circle Radio. This is Johnny Longfeather doing a very good Jabo impression. Um, luring TJ Hooker. Yeah, I got your private message. <laughs> Please address the elephant in the room tonight. The distress signals, Uncle Shit's going and keep sending. Um, yeah, Tony, I'm worried about Tony. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is about Joe Gibson. He's a narcissistic, delusional psychopath. We have to talk about him. And we're going to. I'm going to take some calls. That's what I'm going to do. <sighs> so um, I'm going to look around to see if our first caller is going to be calling in. I don't have his area code, but I'm going to look anyway. Yep, don't have his area code. If anyone wants to help me out with that, let me know. Um, but I did hear one question that he did ask, or one of these kids asked, uh, well, excuse me, Mr. Gibson. You know, they were like, yeah, uh, we were trying to, how would us young people go about asking questions and figuring things out and, you know, all that other shit? First of all, the first step you want to take, young man, is don't listen to stupid assholes on the radio. That's the first step. You already failed at that. Try again. Um, I'm not claiming I'm the smartest person. I sure as fuck am not politically savvy. Like, I'm, I'm just not. I can give a shit less. Um, all I know about politics and anything... I don't know about that is, uh, I don't know. It, we're, we're all still fucking infected by a uh, fake disease, right? That's all I know about it. Also, um, Cobra Jeff, if he's in here or if he's listening, get well, my friend, because, you know, 
he caught a fake disease and he's pretending to be sick and all that shit. So, but yeah, anyway, we're going to get to the phone calls. This is going to be a lovely night, a wonderful night. Um, maybe I'll even call in Joey G and uh, have a discussion with him. Have a discussion with him. It's going to be amazing. And look at, and just like Joey, look at all these nine seven zeros. Oh yeah, and, and I don't have anybody to screen the fucking calls. Here's how I screen a call. We're, I'm going to do it live on the air right now. I'm going to say four one seven, and I'm going to say four one seven. You're on the air on the Joe Gibson wrap-up show. Go ahead, 417. There, I screened 417. Go ahead. Hey, Joe It's Jesse. Call now, Missouri. How are you, buddy? Not bad, man. How are you? Doing all right. That's good. Um, so, what's up? What brings you on? Um, are you are you pro, I- Joe? Con- uh, <laughs> what, what's up with you? No, I think we talked before. We talked uh, about uh, Timbo Slice. and Oh, and, Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah, I remember you. You dropped the fucking hard N and an even harder R at the end of that, man. Well, I, I learned on that, though. I'm going to do that again. I'll call them. I don't know. We'll go Porch Monkey or Moon Creek X. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. That's great. The, uh... The only person I allow to make racial comments on the show like that is uh, Jesco White. You, sir, are no Jesco White. And um, while I have you on the air, I'm not going to just yell at you and hang up on you because I'm not an asshole. But um, what what brings somebody to speak like an asshole like this? I just want to know. Like, is it a disease? Is it a, like a deformity that you come with uh during birth or like what happened did someone not love you enough well i was kind of wondering the same about you but mm. no actually i wasn't loved enough my mother was a narcissist and a, and a fucking weirdo uh, my stepfather beat the shit out of me and um i cry about it every day and i cry into a bottle until I drink it, until I feel empty as the bottle does. And it's just a horrible, vicious cycle. Sometimes I ponder life and death and whether I want to take mine. So how how are you doing? That's me. Thank you. I'm, I'm fucking with you. you. You you called in, you called in to troll me and I'm trolling you back. Here's a secret. I'm going to share, I'm going to give you some free advice. Do not try to fucking troll me because I, I'm like troll royalty. If you don't know, now you know. So do you have anything else stupid you have to say to bore my callers? Mm, just like you're a fat piece of shit. And your show sucks. Okay. Okay, cool. My show sucks, and I'll tell my abs that I'm a fat piece of shit. Have a good night, brother. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. That was great. Your show sucks, and you're fat. Oh, my God, I'm fat. Do I have to put up half-naked pictures of me again? Because the reason why I stopped is because Ashley was going crazy and, 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 and she was reconsidering her relationship. And I got this guy, uh, the Cardinal of Poon, Willie <laughs> Cardinal Khan, that, that was just, I mean, at one point, I'm telling you, the guy right in the middle of fucking first class, about God knows how many feet up in the air he was going from country to country, slaying Poon. I guarantee you he whipped his dick out a couple of times, hit it under his hoodie, and, and went to town on himself thinking about me. And that's why I don't post up half-naked pictures. I'm sorry, Ashley. You're a marriage. I apologize. I apologize. Okay. So uh, back on. <laughs> call me j baby. Back on to the Joe Gibson wrap-up show. Take more callers. Here we go. Nine seven eight. I think I know who this is. What's up, nine seven eight? Jebo, baby, how's it going? Jesco, baby, what's going on? What? What? I mean, I know it brings you on to my my show, but what did you think about Joe Gibson tonight? What What happened? Can you give me a highlight and what your opinion is on this wonderful show? Man, riveting it was. Information filled. I mean, like uh, it was like refreshing, you know, because it's, it's 
it's a new topic every show, right? And it's it's never a rerun or rehashing the same stuff. It's a, it's a new, fresh take that you ain't going to get anywhere else, right? And, uh, you know, it, it's just great. I mean, I'm just glued to a show. I, I can't get enough of it. And um, what, what's kind of disappointing, I, I was trying to get on there at the end because he started talking about conflicts between adults and different groups and and about, like, Fed agents that are working against them, but then I thought he had Fed agents working for him. And I just, mm. he was talking a lot of vagaries, you know what I mean? I wish he would have been, I wanted him to explain more what, what exactly he was talking about. Like, you know, that was starting to go down an interesting road, but he uh, he just stopped himself short and didn't really explain. So, and those kids, those kids, man, did they have some interesting things to say? I mean, I never would have even thought about those things. I mean, that was great. I mean, that. I mean, wow, good stuff. Great ideas, originality, awesome. I love the. I love it when he calls like, uh, you know, like fast food workers and exposes them for not knowing what a Federal Reserve note is. That, that never gets old. Never gets old, and it just shows you, you know, how uh, it just exposes them. Let's take a walk on the serious path here, okay? You got people working for fucking, you know, fast food, fast food joints and all that other shit, and he expects them to know what the Federal Reserve is. All right. I'm halfway educated. I didn't go to college because I didn't fucking want to. I'm lucky my ass made it through real estate school. Shit. I'm lucky my ass made it through fucking elementary school, never mind high school. And I, I think I, I went to trade school. Not I think. I went to trade school for environmental technology, but fuck that shit because I'm never shaving my beard ever again. I look like a six-foot penis without my beard. So, because um, they make you shave your beard to wear a respirator, whatever. So, um, taking a walk on the serious side, these people aren't going to know what the fucking Federal Reserve is. They don't teach you... They teach you economics. They teach you all this other shit in school, but they don't teach financial education in school. They don't fucking do that. They, they were pretty much bred to, to, and we're pretty much brainwashed into thinking, yeah, we got to fucking put ourselves in debt to get an education and get a pretty piece of paper that'll actually pay us so we can pay our fucking bills. So, yeah. I mean, and, and then he's calling these fast food workers, asking them about the Federal fucking Reserve. Why don't you call, I don't know, an actual intelligent politician, but, but they probably won't give him the time of day. Um, maybe somebody that knows what they're talking about, but he can't do that either because if he calls someone that actually knows what they're talking about and understands the Federal Reserve and understands the system and all that other shit, they're going to fucking outsmart him, and he doesn't want that because he's a delusional fucking psycho. Can't have right. that. Yeah, and it, it really doesn't take much to outsmart him, and then, you know, and then he'll just hang up on you. Or, or on whoever, you know, once, but, uh, he, you know, he constantly puts words in people's mouths and like he called the state police and was like, uh, quoting Benjamin Franklin and the guy's like, uh, I'm not here to debate if, if you have questions, I'll answer them. But, uh, otherwise I, you know, I can't sit here and debate anything with you. And he's like, and then when he hangs up on him, it's like, oh, look, he, he was offended by quotes of Benjamin Franklin. Can you believe that? I exposed them. They are, you know, like, uh, you know, it's like he's listening to a different, you know, he hears, he hears what he wants to hear. So, very interesting psychology. It'd be interesting to have a psych evaluation done on Joe. And if he would be honest during that psych evaluation, He'd probably get institutionalized. Seriously, I, you know, one of the last times he was on the wrap-up show here uh, was like when I really finally realized this guy uh, has some serious issues. You know what I mean? And it's, it, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's definitely fucked up. You know, so yeah, but it's fucked up, and I, I kind of take offense to being a uh, blog talk radio host, even though I've only been doing it a little bit. I haven't had much time doing it, but you sit there and make all these claims that all these people are listening to your show. Never mind the bullshit that he spews. The 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 bullshit that offends me, uh, aside his you know lack of fucking knowledge about anything else, is 
I'm doing good. I'm doing what's right. I, I, I'm a radio host. I'm going to get my fucking, he acts like he's Ron fucking Burgundy and he's not. And oh, we have so many callers on the switchboard. So many callers. I, I highly doubt you have so many fucking callers. And the ones that are calling are Tony talk fans or they're trolls trying to fuck with you. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes, you know, it makes what, no sense. What's interesting, what's interesting is that they, you know, you would think that, <laughs> There would be some sort of a plan or like, okay, these people are my guests, so I'm going to remember their numbers, okay? And then I'm going to make sure they don't get muted unless they're making noise, not muting themselves. And there'd be some sort of structure. But uh, I don't know. It's like it was, uh, they're all getting their wires crossed tonight. and. Yeah, I don't get how you that happens. Like, like a little bit who, of organization. Well, yeah, you don't even just organize it, but like, if you're gonna screen calls, shut the fuck up. Like, so, so do you get people? It's, it's like, do you, do you get people? I know they know he's not hiring them. I know he's not paying for these fucking people. Why is everyone asking me what am I doing over here? Is someone have is someone having a parade? Yeah, my daughter just come stomping in the fucking kitchen to grab paper towels because her cat did something terrible. I don't know. You got you guys heard that? My microphone picked up on that. Oh. My bad. See, I'm apologizing. I'm apologizing and I'm telling people what that was. It doesn't sound like I'm at a fucking senior citizen center for at, at like, you know, lunchtime like his show sounded. <laughs> Get your shit together. So that's all, I re- that's all I really have to bitch about with him is just if you're going to be a fucking, I mean, aside the usual, I mean, if you're going to be a fucking radio host, be a good one. Yeah, and he just, like, will, will mute people that, you know, are trying to make a point. If you don't make it quick enough, he, he's muting you, but he'll let Mandela Khan and Chewbacca uh, just drone on and on about the same thing. Every time, word for word. And he, he can't even rebut what they say, because you would think he would at least have a rebuttal for the, for the same spiel they give every every show, but you can't even refute anything. Yet. No, no, you can't. No, you can't. Um, and actually, I do hear the background noise on my show, guys. I just want to let you guys know that there is background noise. I'm going to do my best to mute the mic while you guys are talking. Or if I'm sitting here with my mouth shut, unlike our other favorite radio show host who never shuts their mouth. And the other one, the fat guy, who I'm not going to mention who he is, but he let me, lets me use this channel. He's always eating. Um, and shit. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> and shitting. That was disgusting. I, I don't want to talk about that. I'm going to throw up. Um, wow. Yeah, I got other calls on the line. Uh, and Jesco, do you mind if I put you on mute and keep you over there? Or you know, fuck that, Jesco. You're Jes- Jesco's not a dickhead. I'm not leave- I'm not putting Jesco on mute. So uh, I'll Jesco- mute myself, and uh, so there's no background noise for me. Right on. Awesome. Thank you. That was Jesco White, Mike Buchanan. Uh, Jason's jealous of Joey. How dare you? Wait, do you mean me? Is there another? I keep hearing Jason being thrown around. I know it's not me. Okay. Now I've got uh, 619 hanging out. 619 hanging out. I'm going to bring 619 on. They've been kind of chilling there for a little bit. What's up, 619? Good evening. This is Dr. Peter Paul Ventura from Imperial Beach, California, Bible Believers Church. Dr. Peter Paul Ventura, thank you so much for calling into the show. I, I understand that you are a, um, a a friend of Joe Gibson's. We have had you on my show before, and uh, thank you for calling into the Joe Gibson Wrap Up Show. The uh, wrap up show would be complete without uh, me calling in. To be uh, frankly, uh, to be frank, I'm sorry. I, uh, you know, I've been quarantined myself. I did a uh, live uh, broadcast from uh, from indoors from my house, and uh, mm. it, it it was quite exciting. I had a uh, I was uh, had Joseph watching me the whole time. I was doing making rude comments about my sermon, but it was uh, 
Joseph's going to do and Joseph's going to and Joseph's going to be who he is. And uh, but I'm, I'm excited to call and, and talk about the uh, show. I, I, I actually called in and he would not put me on, and I was screened and everything. And, and uh, I think he uh, got rid of his host uh, Chad. But uh, that's what mm. Joseph does. He uh, eliminates and exterminates whoever he feels he needs to eliminate. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he he says he says that he says that, but I mean, I I kind of feel as though he would have a hard time um, eliminating a pimple from his ass. Well, you see, uh, I I just want to say that. Uh, I, I know the uh, the uh, trolls are getting to him. He was uh, uh, there are so many people that know about Bridget Pruitt and what she's done and how she might have betrayed his trust by sleeping with several black men and doing the uh, ATM, if you will, mm. and uh, just uh, a lot of this stuff was done in the presence of Joseph Gibson. And uh, it, well, he was uh, it, you know not just in the house; he was actually watching sometimes holding the camera while uh, the uh, sexual intercourse was going on between Bridget Pruitt and the uh, several black men, sometimes at uh, two, three at a time. And uh, that was uh, wow. that was Joseph's fantasy, believe it or not, because it was... Uh, but the uh, one thing that really upset Joseph was uh, he uh, actually... Uh, he suggested to the uh, three African Americans, "Let me uh, uh, let take me instead of Bridget," and they, you know they were not into that. And he uh, he was really upset at them and, and just said, "Well, you know, uh, started calling them uh, moon bats and bottom dwellers and bat daggers, mm. and because they wouldn't uh, take him anally." So he uh, that, that upset him obviously, but uh, you know, uh, forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. That's what uh, that's what I taught him, and he was able to forgive Bridget for being the uh, being the attraction there, if you will. But uh, anyway, I, I, I rambled on. Uh, I just wanted to call and say hi and, and uh, wish my best to Joseph Gibson on this raffle show. Well, th- thank you, Doctor Peter Paul Ventura. It's great that you called in. Um, you, you, you know what? I actually I, I do have a treat if you'll stay on the line uh, along with Mister. Uh, Jesco White. I do have someone that's going to call in a very special guest. I'm actually going to bring them on real quick. And um, we would like to hear some. Um, we would like to hear some of. Uh, I don't know. Some truths revealed. This shit's going to get real in a second. Um, I do not know this person. This is my very first uh, encounter with them. And I feel as though I'm going to give them a nice little venting post here since I'm sure. Um, dear sweet Joey, uh, does not do so. So here he is, um, nine seven zero. Welcome to the show. Yeah, Welcome let, to the Joe Gibson. Let me interject. Hey, 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 let me let me interject here. Let me interject. I had the coronavirus, the coronavirus. Oh. No, no, no. I mean, eczema. I have your IT address. Okay, I know who you are, and I know there's one way in and one way out. I'll leave the light on for you. The New World Order Federal Reserve System is happening, and you're too stupid to understand it. I know I was a Navy SEAL working for Latin Kings in jail. Buy my book from Holy Joe Hodgson. All right, next caller, 302, Mandela Khan, my lover. Go, go, it's your turn. No, seriously, though. This is Leroy, and uh, I am Hello, Joe. Leroy. Last... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, anything he ever says is a fucking lie. Oh, so, sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to cuss on your show. You are allowed to say fuck shit damn Everything. Okay, everything. Well, I'll, try everything. Not to, I'll try not to insult the fat line bastard too much, okay? But um, <laughs> he is a liar. I fucking love this guy already. Here, take the floor, my friend. Say whatever you need to say. Yeah. That dude has a, The only workout he's done in the past 10 freaking years was rolling his fat ass out of bed. That's <laughs> it. He's about the size of a Goodyear damn blimp. He can't half walk no more because his back and legs and whatever. And he, he he's not kicking anything. He's not. He doesn't have no rental properties. He lives at 265 Red Oak Drive in Stokesdale, North Carolina, not the 568 or 508 he gives out Willow Pat Road. That's his uh, mother's next door neighbor. <clears throat> so go figure. Um, and I know that because we have the same mother. Shh, don't tell nobody. 
But uh, yeah, and the house the house next door is actually vacant. There's a boat in the front yard filled with trash. A boat in the front yard they use for a dumpster, and um, that's his rental property. Um, but yeah, so any information y'all want to know, just feel free to ask. Well, I do have a question. This is more for my own personal amusement, or you know, my own personal curiosity. Uh, your brother challenged me to an MMA fight. Um, I took it serious and I went and I started training again. I can't, I literally, I tried calling uh, the athletic commission down there and tried to get it set and nobody would get it set. Um, do you think you would have followed through with that? If we actually like got a charity going and if I showed up at gold's gym where he said I was going to uh, show up. No, tell him, tell him you'll David Vandermelon his ass. That's the dude's name, David Vandermelon. He's the one that beat the shit out of him in high school and the, Ooh. uh, oh, in the graveyard. Wait, wait, what? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, he was running his mouth one day, and the Vandermelons were two of the, you know, the rougher crowd brothers, and, uh, yeah, they beat his ass. Holy shit. So how did he get himself involved with that? How did he get himself involved with, uh, with, with, with these guys that, that he actually had to mix it up and get the shit kicked out of him? What happened? Well, you know, I, I was four, year, four years younger than he was, uh, and, uh, and uh, the guys he was messing with were in the same grade with him in school. But then when I got to high school, they were in the same grade as me, if I'll tell you anything. And, uh, you know, so, and by then, Joe had already dropped out and, uh, you know, joined the Navy SEALs. So uh, that's where he met Peter Ventura, um, I guess. But that, that's all I can tell you on that one. That, that is true. Right. I can vouch for that. Oh, there's there's Doctor Ventura on the line right now. So so what happened? You had a falling out with him. You you had a falling out with Joe. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, I really never liked him. But because um, the way he acts on a show is the way he acts his whole life, and um, fuck, that's the way he talks to people. And he gets babied from certain family members because uh, he was in jail. Well, you know what? It was his dumbass that got himself thrown in jail. But uh, you know it's. Um, yeah, no, nah, he's, uh, you've heard, if you ever listen to his shows for the past about two or three months, he's always throwing me under the bus, throwing me on their table, and the other night, I wasn't even out there, my, uh, wife's uncle died, and I was over there with her. Sorry um, about that. That's all right, cleaning up the mess, and everything else, and I got a message when I got back home, Joe Radge out on the show, so, uh, I listened to the show, yeah, he threatened to give me people the information they wanted. Um, told everybody who I was for sure, and uh, nobody was 100% sure. They all just knew me as Leroy. and uh, But he damn sure made sure they did. So I said, well, you know what? There's repercussions to action, so now everybody's going to know who and what you are for sure. Because I'm damn sure they're going to believe your damn brother over uh, some damn uh, ex-convict, Chad. Yeah, he... um. So how did you, you guys grew up in the same household, right? I'm just, I'm under the assumption. No. Maybe you for didn't. a couple of years. For a couple okay, of years. Cause, okay, because there's a drastic difference between you and him. I mean, already I can have a conversation with you, and I, I trying to have a conversation with him is like, you know, it, it's it's kind of impossible, as Jesco would say. I've had better conversations with, uh, with the fucking cat that I found in the shelter that had Down syndrome. It wasn't even making eye contact. <laughs> So I mean, like yeah, you you you're de you're a little different. You're very different from him. Um, so like d different homes was that by choice or like well, if you don't mind me getting too, I'm not trying to get too personal with you. I'm not no, trying to no, fuck, I, fuck I, you I, over I, here. There's no reason for me to lie about nothing. In 1985, our parents got divorced. Um, okay. And if he lived with uh, the mother, I went. I just worked out that way. I went to go live with the father. If he lived with the father, I went to go live with the mother. Maybe that was a uh, Maybe that was a little bit uh, of intervention from someone upstairs to keep me the hell away from that scumbag. But um, yeah, even in even in uh, high school and stuff, he was breaking the law, doing things, causing vandalism, and um, cops picking him up. And you know, him and his uh, cousin got in trouble one night for doing something, probably some type of vandalism. And he ran home to Great Granny's house and hid in the basement. And uh, the cousin couldn't quite make it. He hid in a ditch, and the cops got him, grabbed him, took him around the corner, beat his ass. And mm. uh, you know it. Uh, but that's that's the way it goes. Um, wait, what? What? I see his message here. What weight class could Joe be in? Two hundred five, like he went. Two hundred five, three hundred five. Is he that fat? <laughs> is he is he really a fat fuck? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got that. Now that picture he had on his Facebook, that's the way he used to look, you know, when he was hard on drugs and everything. But um you know, you don't eat and you do drugs instead you tend to lose a lot of weight. But uh Yeah, yeah that was, that's it, how I used to cut weight. I used to years old. Yeah, that's that's how I used to cut weight for fights. I used to just eat one meal a day and I used to just fucking drink alcohol the rest of the day. And I looked great. <laughs> My body hated me. My body absolutely hated me. I looked fantastic though. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so he does. Well, he look still like, thinks he, he he looks fantastic. So, oh my god, well, yeah. I mean, he started. Call, he was like, "Oh, you're a fat fuck." Um, yeah, I mean, he got my MMA record wrong, which is fine. Um, you know, it's just it, like there was something off about him. I was like, "There's something like, there's something off." Like, I mean, so would you say about sixty percent, seventy percent? What would be the percentage of bullshit spews out of his mouth? Oh, the percent of bullshit would be up there in the probably 80 to 90 percent uh anytime he's talking about himself it's a lie um so uh yeah uh, he he hasn't matter of fact uh he blew my phone up all night last night i went to bed probably about 11 o'clock well i went to bed about 10 and laid down and watched um the ending of the acm awards and watched trisha yearwood and garth brooks till i fell asleep and then i woke Mm. up at 2 30 to use the little boy's room and uh seeing my phone was blinking so i looked at it and uh, he had messaged me, so I messaged him back, went back to sleep, woke up at 5.30, get ready to run to the office, and he had messaged me again, so I messaged his ass. But the dude don't sleep. He's up all night. Uh, I don't know what he's doing, but uh, he's doing something to stay up all night. And, uh, you know, he's going down, he's getting in these chat rooms with his buddy Chad in the middle of the night and talking to the governor of Colorado. By the way, is it, he claims the governor of Colorado is just another damn ex-convict, uh, just like Peter Ventura. Sorry, Peter, I know you're out there. Um you know the the well, whole plan. You know, it. you know you are you're you're proud to admit it, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I paid my debt to society when I stabbed those three girls. So yes, and I Jesus, yes, Christ. but it, it doesn't matter. You're good now because you repented and found God and you read the Bible. That's exactly right. That's it's what I thought. Thing. Okay. Well, yeah, people, well Doctor Doctor Ventura. Dr. Ventura also had Joe turning tricks uh, in prison. I mean, that's what I heard. I heard that uh, Ventura was protecting him. You know, he did the oh, whole he thing. Where he, yeah, he gave him, he turned his pocket inside out and asked Joe to hold on to it, and that's what happened. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty much the way it happened. Now, I, don't, I can't swear to that one, but it sounds like something that would happen. Mm. And that's why they have such a close bond these days. <laughs> That's wild. You know, I would have been to him one day in, in prison, and he had his hair all slicked back and lubed up. He looked like a he looked like a little um, prison bitch. Ooh, you, you know, um, the host of this show actually made a song called "Joey G is a Bitch," and uh, it's a rap song. It's not too bad. It, it's not too bad. Uh, I, I won't put you. I won't put you through it, but. <laughs> well, it's okay. You know, I make music too, and I actually make it on a professional level. So maybe that'll be um. Uh, my next oh, venture wow. is to make something about Lion Ass Joe. Well, that's awesome because I know that um, w- there's another uh, person that calls into our show. He's a very rich and powerful man. His name is Benjamin Buford Fontaine the Third, and he wrote a song about Joe. And uh, I'll play that tonight uh, before we sign off because I won't kill anybody yeah, right? about it. <laughs> um, let me see. Also, hey, uh, just out of curiosity, how would you feel? If I try to call Joe's cell phone number and have you guys hash it out on the air, uh, I don't want to talk to him. To be honest with you, I don't want to talk to him. You don't want to talk to him? Nope, nope. I want to break his jaw. Really? Okay. So, so yeah, there's, there, there's, that, there's no more talking there. left in me for him. I'm, I'm gonna flat out just break his damn jaw. He's a pussy. He can't fight. He can sit there and call me a little puny ass punk or whatever, but I'm just as big as he is, but nowhere near as fat. So. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna break his jaw. Well, holy shit! Well, you know, I do have a um. What, what is what is his area code? Because I I think I might have him sitting here in the chat listening to this. I hope so. It's three three six four one nine seven two three six. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's not him. Damn. Oh, damn. I know. I, he he will listen to the show though. He will. You, you know, fuck it. I think I'm gonna. I, well, you know what I want to do? I know you don't want to talk to him, 
But I would like to call him um, and give him all the information. Call him and give him all the information. Say, hey, we just heard this from a reliable source. I would, I would like, I would like to do that. Except, I think uh, Doctor Peter Paul Ventura would do a great job explaining what we heard um, to Joe. And uh, you, you know, what? let me, um, let me put you on mute real quick. Uh, you want me to call you by your name or no? It don't matter. All right, I'm gonna, all right, Leroy, I'm going to put you on. Uh, I'm going to. I think we all know who you are, anyway. Wait, what's this? Oh, Joseph Gibson's in the chat room. He's in the chat room. Leroy. Yeah, what's up? Hey, man, listen. Uh, you, you're. Uh, your your brother's in the chat room listening to this right now. I know you don't want to talk to him, but if you have a message that you'd like to share and give to him, feel free. Uh, the floor is yours. I'm going to sit back and just um, listen. Yeah, I, I, I got a message for him. I told you that night when when you sold me out and every damn thing else. It's over. I mean, it's over. It's long over, and you call me a a puny ass bitch or whatever the hell you, names you want to call me, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is um, you know, when you start t- talking about my parents and everything else, and then fucking my wife in the ass and fucking the kids in the ass and everything else like that, you drew the line. So, whoa, an ass whooping will be coming. I'm gonna go piss Dude, on he, that one. He he actually said that that he would fuck your wife in the ass and your kid is. His, his niece no, he, and said, he said my stepfather. He said our stepfather is. Wow, class act, fucking amazing. He got mad and he got upset, but he doesn't realize, you know, when you take it personal, the personal tax could come back. You know, and I thought my brother was a dick. Yours is definitely worse. I'm sorry to say. What the fuck is wrong with you, Joe? I know you're listening. I'm try- I was trying to get on here and do a decent show about your show because it's the greatest show in blog talk. And then all this stuff just comes to light. And I'm actually pretty disappointed. I'm, I'm pretty damn disappointed. I'm also disappointed that I thought I was going to have to cut weight to 205. What the fuck? I didn't know you were obese. You know, Joe, you're gonna have to call in. Yeah. Okay, Joe, you're. you're, I'm gonna bring Joe on the line because I think Joe should. I think Joe also deserves a chance to kind of defend himself here. Leroy, I'm gonna bring him on. You guys don't have to talk, but I'm. I'm just gonna bring him on. All right. All right. I won't interrupt. (laughs) Hello, Joe. Welcome to the Joe Gibson Wrap Up Show. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, I'm here. I've got I've got Chad. I've got a couple other people here that are listening. Also, uh, they're in the chat room or whatever. You know, the fake Green Berets and everybody else that the fake military guys that Leroy likes to criticize. Uh, they got would, your number, Leroy. Don't worry. Uh, but you, also, I got you your number. Really? Leroy's just a bitch ass pussy. He's just a bitch ass oh. pussy. Hey, he knows hey, where Joseph, I live. Joseph, <laughs> and if he was if he was such a tough up. guy, he'd come and here. He'd come down you. to my road right now and do you, something buddy? about it. Because you're, you're, right? you're a pussy. Because you're a pussy. That's why. That's why you got to go. Because you're, you're going to have a heart aneurysm just you're like before pussy, Christmas. And you got fucked up you're the ass have by your stepfather. And that's why right. he burned Christmas. down your shed. He burned down your have shed when you were fucking in 1993. You got your ear You're a pussy. And a whole family is going to come down here to take care of poor little Joey and take him to the hospital. You're a pussy. Because he overdosed on something. You're a pussy. I will come to your house. I'm a pussy. Leroy. Leroy, you're a I'll run into you somewhere Jason on Gibson Neutral Ground on Summerfield we'll Road, Road we'll in Summerfield, we'll North see. Carolina. We'll see. Him, and his, him and his wife, you're a pussy. They come to my house, tough guy. Come to my house. Right yeah, that's now. real smart. Stay on the line. That's real smart. Stay come on the to line. My There's house. enough minutes left. There's enough come, minutes come, left come, on that show right now to drive to my house. 15 There's minutes, thank minutes you. There's enough on this show right now. There's enough minutes left, tough guy. Come on over here and do it live. And listen, okay. why don't you get out of here? Why don't you get on your cell phone and come, come to my the house? Fuck over here, tough guy. Why come don't on. you get on your cell phone and come to my house? Hold on, Joe. Hold that on. That makes a lot of I... sense, don't it? What? That makes a lot of sense, don't it, little Joey? 
Joe, I had to mute you for a second because you were talking over everybody. That's not nice. It's very rude, and you host the show, and you know better than this. I'm going to bring you back on. You can't be talking over. Now, Leroy is my guest. You cannot speak over my guest. So, so go ahead. Leroy, I apologize. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring him back. Okay. Okay. He's talking now, over me then. Why is Leroy okay, talking hey, over hey, me? Hey, he said he wasn't going to interrupt. That Leroy was his first lie right there. You have to be yelling at my guest. He's practically my co-host. What are hey, you look, doing? Look, I don't care what Leroy is with you, Jay Bob. The point of it is he's a pussy. All right? He got fucked in the ass by his stepfather. He burnt down his fucking shed when he was a kid, and he did nothing about it. He's a fucking drunk, punk-ass bitch. And that's what he is. Simple as that. And if he wants to do something about it, he could have drove over here live on your radio show and said, Here's, I'm at Joe Gibson's house and knocked on my door. And, he, and that's if he's such a big, bad, tough guy. Yeah, but he that won't. makes a lot of sense, he won't. Though, don't it? Yeah, that it makes would a make a lot of Well, you're the it. tough guy. Well, hang on. Why is he talking over me, j -Bo? Why is he talking over me? He said because, he I, because I can. Because you can. Well, well you see, the point of it is, I just called you out. You're the big tough guy. Come you on. You want me to come to come your on. house, you, you fucking idiot? You know where idiot. I live. You know you where I live. Are you stupid? You're, you're just completely stupid. Oh, what, are you scared? Awesome. Are you scared? Are you scared? It's far from being scared. Sounds like he's what, scared, everybody. To to Sounds like he's scared to come to my house. No, you're the one. Okay, you're no. the one started the shit. Come to my house. Okay, guys. Oh, guys. I, 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 I gave you the challenge I first. I differ, and I think everybody out there does. Yeah, he won't different. come, folks. He won't come. Nobody agrees with you because you're well, talking all that shit. I'm, I'm such a punk. I, 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 I do such have. A punk. You're, I, you're I, a fat ass punk. You are. You're a fat ass punk. Come on over here. That's right. All right, he's, he's, You'll have Joe, a heart attack uh, rolling out of bed. You ain't seen your fucking living room in six damn weeks, dude. You stay locked up in the back bedroom on YouTube all night watching your videos and jacking off the pictures of Chad. Ooh. Wait, okay, I put him on mute, but what? what well, again, Joe. Again, Joe is, you're still Joe, not talking true? nothing. You reser he, he reserves the per pervert shit. And like I said, if you're so tough, <laughs> drive over <laughs> to my house. You son of a bitch. You just talked about my stepfather fucking me in the ass. And hey, I'm the one well, who's well, 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 that, that's the truth. You're such well, you were molested. You're, you're dumb that's why you're so angry at the world. You were molested. How in the hell can you remember That's why you're so fucking pissed off at the world. what you did 20 years ago. All right, ago Leroy, look, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Yeah. The point goodbye, of it is, goodbye, you know where I live. Navy Come by anytime you want. All right, prison Want to be Navy SEAL, yep. Just like my friends, the Green Berets that are fake. Yep, okay. Yeah, because Green Berets lead platoons. They sure do. Maybe you should do your research on your friends. Oh, actually, Joe. Joe hung up. He hung up. Yeah, I he think. Can't he, I, I, yeah, I, I think he does that when he gets under fire. When he goes yeah. under fire, he um he he rage quits and he leaves. Yep. He, that's he knows he where I live too. That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah I mean, why do I, mean, I got to go to his house? You you don't have to. See, here here's the thing. Here's what I don't get. Here's what I don't get. Okay. Now, if everybody that's listening. And, you know, I, I'm sure none of you guys are on Joe's side, but, like, if you guys are listening and you're listening to all this, Leroy came in here with some, some pizzazz and some humor, and it was ha-ha-ha, and, you know, got some stuff off his chest and vented. Joe immediately goes to, for the fucking throat. It, he, doesn't ha he can't have a conversation with him. I had, to, I had to mute him. When Joe was quiet, that was me muting him. I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah, I had to mute him because he, he talks over everybody. He, he fucking, he doesn't shut up. And then, I mean, people are pretty much saying that you, you kind of cucked him there. And, like, Oh, well, he know, is my bitch. Hmm. It, it, it kind of sounded like that. I mean, he, he runs away whenever he's faced with a, uh, and he's in my chat room right now. And, you know, Joe, I know you're listening, man. You, you kind of, you kind of shy away. You kind of shy away from stuff. Um, when people put you under fire, I don't know why you do that. And, and as and as far as fake green berets go, why would you hang out with fake green berets? I mean, that's like me going to the, an eye party store and getting some cowboy hats and you know putting them on my friends like DC Two and Johnny Longfeather and Ashley and everybody in this chat room pretty much and calling them cowboys. I don't know. So yeah, man. I, I mean, yeah. Well, like I like I've said before, the closest thing he's got to being a Navy SEAL was being getting a swirly in prison. <laughs> what landed him in prison? Like I, I don't like what. What was it? Was he just like a nuisance, or like what was it? Like 
Because he has us all convinced broke, that he, he broke was like the law. A, it was, it was burglary, burglary or something. He broke the law and he went to prison. I mean, I don't, I don't quit. personally hold that against him, but, uh, you know, right. what I hold against him is the insults and, and everything else. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what gets to me. And the whole point of the problem is I told him, the last thing I messaged him on the phone when he wouldn't damn shut up messaging me was, why don't you come clean on your blog talk radio show in front of all them kids tonight and show them what it takes to be a man to actually tell the damn truth. And he didn't do it. He still continues with his lie. I mean, yeah, well, you know, everybody. Uh oh, they lost audio. Dun, 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 dun. I'm still here. I bet you uh, uh, the other guy's still here, too. Peter Ventura's still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, too. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting. You know, he he also knows where you live, so if he's calling you scared and this and that for not going to see him, can't the same thing be said about him for not going to see you and if he doesn't want to go and see you for whatever reason are those more valid <clears throat> reasons than than your I'm reasons back, so. are not to go see him and and, well, and another there's thing plenty is, of neutral there's plenty of neutral ground in between here and there right right exactly uh, i'm back i'm anyway, uh, it just sounds I'm, like oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm back, but uh, continue talking. I just want to apologize for that. And no, it wasn't Jesco trying to... Jesco, sorry. How the fuck can I mix those two up? It wasn't Gibby trying to um, fucking hack my show. He he couldn't he couldn't hack weeds with a weed whacker, so... Um, yeah, but uh, go, go ahead. Uh, continue, please. And uh, Joe is a big uh, proponent of, like, the Second Amendment and everything, which is, which is good. I, I agree with that. Um, but uh, I, he's also uh, very, yes, he and very open problem. about being a felon. Yeah, right? that's his problem. So, he knows I don't own no damn guns, and that's the first thing he would do is pull a gun because he can't fight. But, yeah, he doesn't and want to repeat of to uh, Vandermelon again. He doesn't want that drama, does he? You no, know, what? I, no, I, like I got a question. Not like that night back in the late '80s in the graveyard. No. Well, I got a, I got a question from a Mike Buchanan, who's a, a son of a bitch, who likes to steal people, uh, who likes to uh, promote music. Um, how, what does he do to make money? What does uh, Leroy? What, what does Joe do to make money? Is he a landscaper? Is he a male stripper? Is he like a pineapple <laughs> farmer? Like, what does what does he do? <laughs> Oh yeah, he farms right. He farms dingleberries around from uh, other faggot asses. <laughs> He's a dingleberry farmer. Yeah, I already no, told really. everybody what he does. So, no, what, what, uh, what, yeah, what does he, he do? Does, he does. For, for, he does, the, for the listeners, he does run a small landscape and crew. Um, I don't know how much work he actually does, and not much, I think. Um, but uh, you know, he does run a small landscape and crew. Okay, so that's that's legit. I thought he just like mowed lawns. No, no, like, that, no, that's he, legit. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, shit. I have nothing to benefit from lawns. No, no. I, I just I assume that he um. Now, now I have a question for uh, Doctor Peter Paul Ventura. What did Joe do in prison to make extra money? I, I mean, or do do we even want to know? Like, what what happened with that? Well, uh, the things that he did for money was uh, he came to me for money. And uh, it wasn't uh, what we would do is we would trade his uh, sexual services that he would perform for uh, soups, cigarettes, and uh, the, the small amounts of cash that we uh, would uh, contraband and, and trade within the uh, prison walls, within the concrete box of the times we lived in that day. And... Uh, to, to make matters worse, uh, the reason I would slap him around uh, several times was because he was given 
uh, what I would call it back then. He was given that ass away. And um, at one time, uh, you know, the uh, when we first started, we were giving the samples, we call it, instead of uh, uh, two soups, we were giving it away, uh, get, uh, a record deal, half a soup. That's what he'd give the ass away for. But he was doing it for nothing. And, and, I, and I remember telling him, Joseph, that is a four soup service. If you're going to do the ass to mouth, it, it's, it's four soups. And I'll be damned if you're going to give that away and cost me money, you little bitch. And I would tell him that in those words. And I feel bad for that to this day. I feel terrible. Uh, it, it breaks my heart that his that his ass hurt so much because of me. And uh, and I apologize. But uh, that is the past. And, and the fact uh, that I done my time, I paid my debt to society, me stab, putting a knife and threatening to stab uh, three teenage girls and raping them is, is the past Ooh. as well, and uh, my name is Dr. Peter Paul Ventura, and I approve this message. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Am I the only one laughing and crying at the same time right now? <laughs> Probably the most fucked up spell I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh my god. Okay, we 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 have more questions for you if you don't mind, Leroy. Um, <laughs> we have more questions for you. Uh, someone someone in the chat room asked, um, how much how much black dick. Did Bridget take before Joey ran away crying? Yeah, I'm like him. I won't insult his family members. I only insult him. Okay, okay, very, very. I understand that. I understand that. Um, I think uh, I think uh, Doctor Peter Paul Ventura is pretty well versed on. I, I think he he knows Bridget pretty well. Uh, how how well does Peter Paul Ventura know Joe? Like how? Uh, doctor, how how well do you know him? Like, I mean, Leroy says you know him quite a bit. You're like a father figure to him. But like, are you are you in his life? Um, you know, uh, a lot. Are you are you constantly there? Are you, are you the constant in his life? His beacon of hope. His Jiminy Cricket, as some would say. Well, every time uh, Joseph has a yearning for a. Uh, big black penis he calls me to uh to try to uh you know gravitate away from that uh every time he uh cannot get an erection he calls me for the uh for the correct uh substance to uh to get that uh every time that uh the day after that he give that he did give in to a big black man with a big huge black veiny penis. I am the person he calls to uh, to mourn to it and, and drain his sorrows. So I'm here for on his shoulder to cry on. I am his mentor and uh, I'm always here for him. And uh, you know we we uh, sometimes I, I read a Bible verse or two to him to and it makes the uh, pain in his ass go away and uh, he feels as if, as if his uh, little brown hole puckers up and uh, cheers and heals himself with, uh, with my teachings. Uh, and I hope that helped. Um, it definitely helped. Uh, Leroy, I have a question. Um, Joey and the Latin Kings. Um, also, how could he be a Latin King if he has claimed to be an Italian? Joe is an Italian. Come on, man. That, that's, that's not a serious question, I hope. <laughs> yeah, was, uh, someone... Uh, at, so, someone... At, King, someone at, Kings wanted him dead. Whoa. They they actually wanted him dead? They wanted to, fuck, they wanted to fucking ice him? Because, like, how does... Okay. Why do they want... Why would they go after him, though? Snitch! <coughs> that, <coughs> sorry, I had a sneeze. Ha! 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 Snitch! Sorry. Oh, God bless you. Yes. No, thank you. Um, really? Holy shit. Um, and, and how 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 have they not fucking how have they not gone after him? Like they're nowhere. I know, Latin King, nowhere near what they used to be. 
Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I have a, I have a, um, well, he's not a friend anymore, but same situation. Uh, literally same situation. Uh, uh, I, I can, I can add a little bit to that story. There was a back oh, good. deal, if you will. Uh, there was, uh, there were several members that were incarcerated for the Latin Kings and the, uh, Joseph Gibson was uh, performed uh, several acts of fellatio in and out of prison for uh, about, uh, it was uh, 30, 33 members, if I believe, 33 members. He had to perform four acts of, uh, of fellatio or, uh, or uh, anal sex with them. And it, it was, uh, he called it love making or uh, penetrating of the minds, if you will. But it, it, it was a uh, that was what sealed the deal, and that is what sealed his fate to where he would not be attacked. Uh, that was the covenant that we made with the Latin Kings. Uh, I'm Dr. Peter Paul Sorry. and I approve this message. Oh my God! <laughs> I had a talent of this shit. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, what, if you want to read. If, if you, if you want to re, if you want to re-listen to this show because we've had some fucking highlights, uh, there's a dude who's got me. Uh, he's live streaming it right now. His name's Insane Energy. Um, normally, if you type in Insane Energy on YouTube, punch enter on your uh, on, on the keyboard. This show will come up. He'll, he'll he labels them properly too. So that's, that's uh, good. He, I, I think Joe has one last comment to make, too. I don't know if you can hear him or not. I, I got him in the background here. I have a right to fucking kill you. These bastards show up at your front doorstep. Shoot the bastards in the face. Yeah, come <laughs> to my door. <laughs> yeah, he's. Does he carry? I mean, I, I assumed with the. Um, with the background, the whole like criminal stuff, he, he, he wouldn't be allowed to carry. I don't know if he carries or not. I mean, he carries a lot of weight. <laughs> well, <laughs> either, either way, it's fucking that's some heavy shit. Um, <laughs> really? Jesus. So, uh, would you say he's clocking in at about two fifty? Uh, probably more than that. Really, he doesn't look like a big guy. He looks like like. like do Do you have any photos of him? Because I'm right now. I'm picturing like that old picture, just his face, but like on a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man's body. If that if, is that accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Holy shit! How did he get so big? Like how how do you get that fucking fat? You know, I I couldn't tell you. I I could try to do it, and I couldn't accomplish that. Holy shit! Um, if you don't mind me asking, Leroy, what, what what do you what do you do to pay what are you doing to pay bills, man? I um right now I I've got my real estate license, and I I personally I, I drive a fucking Uber and I try not to hang myself every day. And I'm kidding for everybody in here. I know. Um, I, I'll even tell you what I do. I got the uh, rental properties. Um, I'm still getting um some um money coming in from the government where you know I was a Navy SEAL undercover in prison. And, uh, you know, I run a small landscaping crew when I'm not scamming people. So, what, you, you were in every sale? No. <laughs> oh. All right, yeah, you, you fu- he fucking trolled me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the, fu- the fucking hi- the hierarchy of the trolls gets trolled. I was like, wait, are you actually a Navy SEAL? I, I was no. going to say, you know, your, your brother's trying to steal your life. You know, this is this is how I know he was never a Navy SEAL. First of all, when I was in high school, I was attempting to join the Navy, and they said, uh, "Well, if you drop out of high school, we can accept you." They don't accept high school dropouts. The Navy no, SEALs don't. damn sure don't accept high school dropouts or folks that get a GED. People with a GED, the Navy is the only service you can get into, and you're not going to be a Navy SEAL in a year or two. So, you know, go figure. No, and you need uh, a waiver. You, know, you need a waiver as well. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, I spent um, from the early 2000s to about 2014 traveling the world working. And um, I've been out of the United States, honestly, about 120-something times. And I've been all over the world. Now I stay at home, and I'm a system administrator, and I work from home. There you go. 
Yeah, I, you know, I try to um, I try to join the Marines. Here's a little uh, light I'll I'll give you guys. I'll shed some light into my life because I'm such a badass. Um, <laughs> I ended up. Uh, I'm kidding about the badass the badass thing. By the way, um, long story short, high school somebody was mean to my friend. I was mean to them. Um, got in a little bit of trouble, and I tried to go into the Marines. I tried to actually get into the Marine Corps. I tried to get into the military. They have a very fucking strict policy uh, with the Corey check. They, there, there's no way you can get a, like, very, very difficult to get a waiver, very difficult to get a waiver for anything. Um, come to find out, actually, the Marines were close enough to actually bring me in, but I had a, a stupid tattoo on my hand, which I do not want to talk about. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, that, that's why they didn't take me in. But the, uh, the Army were like, fuck no, we're not touching you. <laughs> the, the Army were like, fuck you, no, fuck you, we're not touching you. I didn't know much about the Coast Guard at the time or else I would have done that um, because, you know, I live in Massachusetts. We have a base here and all that other stuff. And uh, a lot of my friends are in the Coast Guard and they're like saving lives and doing, uh, doing God's work. Um, and I wasn't going to go in the Navy because I, you know, no offense to anybody in the Navy. I'm not dressing up like a fucking sailor. Sorry. Big Popeye fan, but it's not happening. And I think I see. I'm getting threats from Joey in your front, in your in your room now that he will see me tonight. <laughs> Dude, I you know Joe, I wouldn't do that. You are gonna get hit. Dude, I wouldn't put that in here. Well, he put like, it in like, there, so you know what? He done threatened he was coming over here tonight, so you know what? I'll give him the fair opportunity. I'll let him get out of his vehicle, and if he's got a gun, I'll kill him. I'll kill my own brother. If he ain't got a gun, I'm just going to beat his fucking ass and take pictures, and I'm going to share it to y'all. Oh, God. Listen, Joe, Joe call back in. I'm down on the ground going, why he's down on the ground going, little Jason, little Jason, stop, stop. I'm going to take out my phone. I'm going to snap some HD fucking pictures, maybe even a video. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me get it. Joe. Call, Joe, call back in. I want to talk to you myself, Do not, and don't talk over me. I want to talk to you myself. I won't have Leroy hand you an ass whooping again. I'm going to talk to you myself. I'll mute myself. <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to mute himself. Joe, Joe c call back in. We need, we need to have a conversation, you and I, right now about self-control. Where are you? That's Johnny Longfeather sitting on the line. I always fucking confuse him and Johnny Longfeather. You know, uh, Johnny Longfeather, I just want to give a quick shout-out to Johnny Longfeather. Um, Johnny Longfeather was one of the greatest voice actors of all time. Uh, that's all I really want to say. Um, he, he's amazing. Thank you. Okay, Joe's going to call in. Joe, I need to talk uh, to you. We need to have, we, he said he's coming, he's coming now. Well, do me a favor. You know where you got that one line from, Joe? One way in and one way out? That literally is my road. You know that. It's a fly road. So text me when you get to the top of it, please. I will walk well, out the end of my driveway. Joe, I'd rather you uh, call uh, into the show. Call it. Listen, Joe, call into my show. Do not go there. Don't don't go. Don't go to your brother's. Call, call no, me. No, no, come here. Text me when you get to the top of the road, and I will walk out to the end of the fucking driveway. I. I don't think you have to worry about him showing up. He's he's just talking. He's he, on the internet. He's a tough guy. He can beat up J Bo. He can beat up Leroy, but he ain't going nowhere. He's just trying to say, oh shit. He's just trying to save face. And uh, you know what's gonna happen when we get off this call? I'm gonna go in the house. All this shit's going off, and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> right. I'm gonna sleep real comfortable. Yeah, he <clears> ain't going he's nowhere. Got he, ain't about a, he ain't about that life. He doesn't want the one thing he, yeah, before he comes nosing around here, he knows what the fuck I have around the yard. That son of a bitch will tear his ass a new asshole. I'll go out in the, I'll go out in the morning. I'll say dingleberry everywhere. There'll be pieces of Joe Gibson that my fucking dog ate. Ooh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Great Dane and a German Shepherd. Jesus Christ! Yeah, no, that's that's like on um, that's like don't fuck with me territory. I was attacked by yeah, a chihuahua. Yeah, I, I think they'll be sleeping I'm, I'm outside tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was attacked by a chihuahua once. I'm still fucked up from it. I have nightmares. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm I mean, dead hey, serious. I got a chihuahua too. 
My daughter. Has Do you a have chihuahua. a chihuahua? <laughs> Those motherfuckers yeah, are so. They are so fucking vicious. Uh, my my brother, who's a dickhead too, um, he had a chihuahua and he put the fucker down. And I guess right before he fell asleep, I mean, this thing used to torment me. This motherfucker, I'd see its eyes and its fucking teeth every night, like in the deepest, darkest depths of my, my mother's house. And then I guess the night that they put him to sleep, motherfucker jumped up and bit the nurse and then, then went. Like that, that thing was just like pure evil incarnate. I would, I'd rather, I've been attacked by a Rottweiler. That sucked. I tried to choke the dog out. It didn't work. It, it literally didn't work. The, the fucker threw me around and like, I was like, yeah, well, I'm dead. The only thing that stopped him, I think, was my stepdad pulled out a milk bone and all that other shit. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being serious. It was fucked up. It was that fucked was up. Shit. The dog yeah. had his teeth. Yeah, the dog had his teeth in my forearm. I have fucking scars from it. And in order to try to get the dog's teeth or, or get him to loosen up his jaw, my stepdad step starts hitting the fucking dog in the head, and it was like a, a hammer and a nail. I'm like, dude, stop. The fucker's going deeper. We don't need it. Um <laughs> But do do you think he's capable? Do you think he's capable of that, uh, Doctor Peter Paul Ventura? Do you think he's capable of going to his brother's house to actually fight him? Doctor Peter Paul? Oh no, we lost Doctor Peter Paul Ventura. That's all right. His call. Oh gone. man, I enjoy listening to him talk too. Yeah, he's a good guy. I mean, he found God. Everything was great. Everything is fantastic with him. Um, I, I do want to bring know, up somewhat. Was, was it Kent that brought Dr. Peter Paul Ventura to the Lord? Uh, he's been no, he, he's brought about 10,000 people. Uh, I believe so. God's great. Right. I believe so. Uh, two, 240, I unmuted you. You're on the air. Oh, hey, guys. It's Derek. I just, hey, Derek. I just wanted to say... Just wanted to say to to uh, to Leroy that I really appreciate him coming on the show. This has been a fucking epic episode. Just Absolutely. incredible stuff. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just unbelievable. It's it's crazy to me that you guys are in the same family because you're so different. But that's I guess that's life. <laughs> no, I, I you know when, when I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong and everything else. I won't I won't. Um, I don't get all excited like the prison bitch does. And, um, Ooh, yeah. you know, I, you heard me on the show before. I get excited out of pure entertainment. People think I'm getting mad and everything else, but uh, it's more or less to cause a little ruckus. And, uh, when I mute myself, normally I'm over here bawling, laughing my ass off on the floor. Yeah, yeah you I mean, and I uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Peter Paul, he's quite a character, that guy. Oh, Peter Paul, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> oh, he just Peter, uh, Dr. Oh. Peter Paul Ventura. Yeah, I mean, he, every, he you know what? You. It's only five years I can handle that, that's what he said. No, a habitual fellow in his life in prison, you dumb fucker. Uh, you better what? call, cry, baby, it's my road. What, you know, what, what, what is his number again? Let me let me talk to him. What What's his number again? Uh, 336. Four one nine seven two three six. All right, I'm ca- I'm calling him because he needs to yeah. he needs to calm down. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll be right back. All right, cool. Eric, stay with me. We might need to talk Joe off of a ledge. Jesco, if you're there, I might need your help too. Yeah, what do you want? What are you doing? Why are you going to your brother's house? What's the matter with you? Huh? Don't worry about it. No, you can't do that. You don't. You can't do that. He hung up. I bet you he's on the toilet. Extra <laughs> I bet you he's uh, on the toilet. Is Chad called in. I wonder if Chad is called in. I don't know Chad's um, area code. Eight one two, maybe. Is there an eight one two on there? I see an eight four three. Let me see. You know, the first uh, murderer, I believe, was um, from from what I heard from Pastor Ken was uh, was it eight was was it Cain? Cain killed Abel. This is what this is reminding me of. Cain and Abel. Yeah, is, <laughs> I know uh, when my actually, <laughs> I know when my brother 
when my when my brother fucking betrayed me, I won't get into it and what he did. Maybe some other show, because um, he's a cunt. And if he's listening, Michael, fuck you. Um, I have a. I, I actually got a tattoo of the mark of Cain on my chest, and I realized it was the mark of you know it was, it was the mark of Cain from um, Supernatural for all you Supernatural fans. And um, I don't know if it's legit or not, but I, I assumed everybody would just think I was a badass for getting the mark of Cain tattooed on my chest. Except everyone just assumes that I'm a supernatural fan, which I am. Fucking Winchester. You want to hear about the tattoo on your hand? You want to know about the tattoo on your hand? I got you through Spectrum talking about the cable company. Got me through Spectrum. (laughs) (laughs) Like the fucking internet company's gig. Two shits. What the fucking ex convict says. We got you through Spectrum. He's on a he's on a certain side of the spectrum, but we're not going to get into that. I, th- I think um, he put too many letters on there. I think he meant rectum. Oh, probably. Probably yeah, is. Exactly. And, and Jesco, what are you asking me about my tattoo on my hand? Yeah. Uh, well, I may or may not have got a uh, <laughs> my ex's name tattooed on my wedding finger. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. My daughter's mother. I got it, and then I think we broke up like six months later. So I've so, I've, so far I've had saline done to it. Um, I won't get laser done because laser fucking hurts, and I've been through enough pain in my life. So yes, this is true. I will take a picture and send it to you guys in Discord tonight. It says Diane. Well, right across guys, me. I'm sorry, but Joe's ten minutes away, so I got uh, two or three minutes before I'm dead. So right, Be careful, Leroy. Joe Joe knows people in high places, too. He can really pull a lot of strings, and, uh, you know... Well, he's when he's bent, down, when he's bent down on his knees between the legs, they're all in high places. <laughs> he's the pre- well, president uh, of Latin Kings, man. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, Leroy, I really do appreciate you calling in, man. This has been a very fun show. You know, I'd like to actually have you on the show whenever the hell you want to come on. You just... Let me know in Discord when you want to get on the show. I'll get oh, you yeah, on yeah. here. We'll oh, yeah, because we'll I, 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 I will do more shows because I love doing my Joe Gibson wrap-up show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so, but, he's back in the conversation in the chat room if you want him to call in now. He must... Uh, damn, that was um, a yeah, quick I, visit to your house, Leroy. <laughs> hey, damn, I got I got hurt quick. Uh, yeah, you, you, amazing you, your call, you might want to go check your dog's teeth. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, Le- Leroy, you're going to you're going to call it a night cuz I I can I'll I'll talk to Joe or if, if whatever you want to do, man, cuz I I I'm know you've been on the air. And, yeah, I know hmm? I've talked too much. I'm going to shut up and listen for a little while and I'll check some emails and uh that's about it, but I'll be listening. All right, well, you're you're in charge of the mute. Yep. It's, you're you're in charge of the Hall of Fame. Hmm? He's already in the Hall of Fame of the show. <laughs> it's great. It's actually great. Yeah, it's un- unbelievable. Hey, what's this about WrestleMania, too? I heard you say something, but you're cracking on people about being a spoiler of WrestleMania. That was, I had to look that shit up. That was this weekend. This is the first time I haven't seen it in a long time. I'm sure I didn't miss nothing. Because you didn't miss anything. No it's, it's very sad. There's no audience. Um, I felt like I watched... I don't know what the fuck I watched. The uh, John Cena and the Fiend match was very weird. Um, it was very fucking weird. I, ca- I kind of liked it. I kind of didn't. Um, and The Undertaker versus AJ Styles, that was the um, very... The Undertaker come out with his fucking walker? <laughs> uh, no, he, he brought a Harley to, the, to a graveyard and beat <laughs> the shit out of AJ Styles. I'm serious. The American Badass Undertaker is back. Oh so, man, he must have. He must have. He must be taking some prednisone or something because he could barely walk before. The motherfucker. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'm. I'm a professional wrestler myself, and you know what, man? The fucking Undertaker can still go, and I don't know how he can do it. I have no idea. Yeah, he was. Um, he was my son's uh, big um, hero when my son was young, watching wrestling, and a buddy of mine up in Connecticut. 
um, runs a memorabilia store, and all the wrestlers go by there. So he got me a personally signed um, Undertaker poster, and I gave that to him one year <laughs> for uh, one of his Christmas presents or something, and he thought it was like the world's best thing. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, I used to watch it, but it's gotten too stupid since about, I think, about 2006, 2007, when they went to PG and G-rated shit. It, it was no longer fun for an adult. Yeah, it's it's the shits. They try to throw in some adult stuff or for people that actually enjoyed it, but um, it's it's few and far between. Uh, Goldberg wrestled. Um, I know. Goldberg oh, man, wrestled. I can't believe that either. The last match he was in, he about killed his opponent because he couldn't pick him up and suplex him properly and drop him on his head. Yeah, that was The Undertaker. He fucking picked up The Undertaker and dropped The Undertaker in Saudi Arabia. They did all that shit for the Saudis. Uh, I, I can go on and bitch about wrestling, but I, there, there's just not enough time for the show, honestly. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a wrestling. I might do a wrestling show some night. There you go. That'd be fun. Yeah. I might do a wrestling <laughs> show some night. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I think Joe may have called back in. Did he? Let's see. Why do I not see him? No, I don't see his number here. He's 336, uh, right? I don't see him. Uh, he's back in your chat room. Yeah, I see him back in the chat. Well, whatever, man. Hey, listen, Leroy, you're in charge of the mute button, man. If you feel like you want to come back on, you hit mute. All right. I mean, All right. hit unmute. So. All right, man. This has been a fun episode. It's been great, man. It's been, it's been this, wonderful. And this has been a honestly, fun Joe, year. Joe's show was actually pretty damn good tonight, too, because he had absolutely no control over it. Yeah, I, it sounded like he was in a cafeteria. Um, I mean, even it was, even in the beginning of my show, it sounded like my daughter was having a fucking parade going around my kitchen. Um, and still, there was recovery. There was, At least I think so. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is it, do you think it's possible that the wrap-up show that I run um, is run better than Joe's original show? Of course. A hundred percent. Do you think Joe I should host, the... I should host Joe's Joe... show? That'd be amazing. I mean, I would listen <laughs> for sure. Like, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be uh ironically either i'd actually i'd actually listen like dude you know i you jesco did you hear the whole show tonight with joe yeah yeah did I you did, you did, know dude, what did, i just i want to say one quick thing about joe and chad the, the high powered show they're doing these days i guarantee you and the amount of listeners they have and emails and and all this uh you know commotion that they're generating because of their you know huge show it's going to be any day now they're going to receive a huge contract with like info wars or some major platform and well, you know, Jess, they're going to play that's all he's click jesco jo joe is friends with with alex jones as he stated clearly on one of his shows they're they're friends well there's only one yeah. there's only one person that can confirm that this is true and that is one of joe's dearest closest friends we're going to bring him on. We have nine minutes left, and I would like to hear his final thoughts on this show. Oh, please the one, the me, only. Me. Yeah, that, that's who it is, the one, the only, Dr. Oh. Peter Paul Ventura. Round of applause. I'm clapping. I'm clapping for him. I'm, He's unbelievable. Clapping and fapping. Hashtag clapping and fapping. I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Peter Paul Ventura, you're on the air. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, there yes. he is. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Ha hello. How are you, okay. sir? Well, um, I'm I'm doing great, and I uh, thank you. I was I had it turned down. I had some uh, some uh, uh, something on the TV that uh, might be a little inappropriate, but it was uh, it was good. Oh, it was good. It was a good <laughs> little thing. It was a beautiful thing, actually, and and it was wonderful. And it uh, brought me great pleasure to uh, to remember the good old days. Um, 
<laughs> but you know, it's a it, it, it's beautiful. What what we see, what we do, and what we've done, it's just a great thing. And um, you know, I remember, um, I just remember yesterday how uh, Joseph Gibson and I were, uh, you know, riding down the um, what the people call the Green Mile. We used to call it the uh, the, the Brown Hole because that's what we'd go down when uh, Joseph was going to what be what was. A, a, uh, a mile of pain became a uh, a mile of pleasure, if you will. What he dreaded once, he lived. Uh, that's what he would look forward to at the end of the day. And when he uh, when he got out, it was uh, it was a sad day for Joe because now he did not have an excuse to take a uh, a big penis up in the ass. And um, but he found ways. He found lots of ways to uh, to accommodate that and. Um, I want to say that I, I helped him out with that. I helped him search and I helped him find the uh, the, the penis he yearned for. And it, uh, at the end of the day, uh, he the, the one he disliked the most is the one he learned to uh, to to, uh, to to enjoy the best, if you will. You know, because that Amen. big, black, juicy, veiny bulgy purple headed mule pecker it was a beautiful thing for him and he loved it and it and i just brings me great joy just talking about it that uh hallelujah brother amen 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 bro. are there are there tears dripping from your eyes right now because you seem like you're in a very proud and you know just well, very emotional. proud moment. i mean it's, it's, it's emotional jabo i mean when he talks about it i mean well, he I'm, about I, I'm dripping i'm i'm definitely dripping amen <laughs> Praise be. Amen. It, 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 Dr. Peter Paul Ventura, thank you so much on your final thoughts. I I want to give everybody a, a thank you. Um, Can I also, say one I would, last thing? Can I yes, say sir. one last thing? Absolutely. Okay, uh, this is Dr. Peter Paul Ventura, and I approve of this message, and I approve of this wrap-up show. Thank you. Amen. Hey, Amen. Thank you. I, if I get the approval. California. Such a godly man. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. And speaking hey, of godly, hey, what's up? Uh, can, we should uh, do some shout outs in the chat room. There's been some very notable people in there. Of course, Ashley Baby, who I uh, hope she's getting ready because I'm going to come over there and clap some cheeks. And you know, Joey's salty about that. Mm -hmm. Super jealous. Uh, Kid Cat, TJ Hooker, Heinz Guderian. Honky hijinks, internet friend, DJ Hooker, Mike Buchanan, Mike Hunt, anyway. Hank Shortfeather, Domingo the Horse, shout out Domingo. The, the chat Charles. has been excellent on BTR tonight. It's been friggin' cracking me up over here. So. It's great. We had a great show. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and now I need to make some announcements. Um, Amen. I. I, I, since Tony is, you know, very iffy and offy and all that other stuff, uh, I know he's going to still do his uh, show um, whenever he wants. I feel as though I feel as though I should do more of these shows. I like doing them. I like our guests. I like the uh, the audience that it brings. I feel as though not only should there be a Joe Gibson wrap up show. And a Tony Talk wrap up show, but I feel it, I'm like the Ryan Seacrest of Blog Talk Radio, except I look like, you know, not Ryan Seacrest. Um, I'm thinking maybe we do a, a God's Rainbow Ministries wrap up show. Yeah, thinking, I think these wrap up shows are a great idea. Hey, oh. Uh, Jago, I got a quick question for you about the whole uh, J. Bo uh, Gibson, Joe Gibson showdown match. Okay, so if he is in a higher weight class than you now, um, would you feel comfortable uh, fighting him when he's, you know, obviously like fifty pounds plus more than you? Would you still feel comfortable in that match? I would feel very comfortable uh, being a heavyweight and then taking whatever <laughs> fights I can get. I would, um, I would feel as though me walking in there at a lean 245. Thank you, genetics. 
<laughs> lean 245, lean 250 against any, even if he goes all the way up to like, I don't know, 340, shit, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I've always, I always like to fight bigger guys, and I'm actually thrilled that Joe is um, borderline obese at this point, and uh, I could, I'll be moving faster than him. I, I thought I was going to rip him to the mat and just kind of like pound him out, but then I realized now I can stick to my uh, forte, which is striking, and I can just, you know, kind of abuse him with leg kicks. That's always fun. That was a good question, Jessica. He, Thank you. What if he felt like he had too much of an advantage because he's so much more heavier? What if he said, oh, all right, let's switch it up to a sumo wrestling match? Would you still do that? I feel as though I would I would be at the disadvantage because um, sumo is definitely, um, they go by size. And if he's over 300 pounds like uh, his brother and – everyone has said that he is, uh, then I, um, I, I believe I will lose that one. Uh, there, there, there's just, there's just too much. Too girth. much gut, man. Yeah. Yeah. Gut girth. Gut girth. Yeah. I mean, I would try to chop them and all that stuff like the sumos do, but I, I think what will happen is my hand will get stuck in his stomach. It will absorb. It probably sucked me in completely. I'll end up in another galaxy and then he'll just kind of take a deep breath and shoot me out of his belly button, and I'll land on the outside of the ring and lose. And that would be very embarrassing. I cannot accept that match. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for the show. Thank and, you. Um, let's, no problem. Let's, let's oh, wait, do wait, more. Wait, wait, wait. Let me interject. Let me interject. Let me interject. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I forgot you were still there. Not to interrupt. Not to interrupt. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, guys, thank you. Leroy, special shout out to you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Great show. Have a good night, guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next wrap up show on whoever show I'm going <laughs> to wrap up. And speaking of wrap up, everybody wrap it up. Keep it safe. And, um, as always, like Dr. Peter Paul Ventura says, keep it tight, Kulo. Have a good night. <laughs>